Cyberbullying is a growing problem. It affects nearly half of all middle school and high school students. With easy access to the internet and a cell phone in almost everyone's pocket, we asked the students of our community how much time they spent online with networking sites. It's usually a lot, so it's around like 15, 16 hours. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Well, I have an iPhone, so I have a Facebook app on it, so I pretty much can say I'm constantly on it. I use the internet like maybe 20 hours per week. It's like a big part of my life. I don't think I would live without it. I'm on it every day. I have an iPhone, so I go on it whenever I have the chance. A lot. <laughs> there, there's really not a number that I can put with it. I mean, just the weekdays alone, most of the afternoon, and then weekend a whole lot more. 15 to 16, about 20 hours a week. Yeah. After hearing them, social networking sounds like a part-time job. Almost 90% of teens today are members of social networking sites like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. They are also avid users of text messaging. However, a downside of this networking is that it can lead to real abuses. One of the fastest growing of these abuses is called cyberbullying. It's a serious problem that has some dire consequences when it's carried too far. Our guests are Sean Marie Edgington cyberbullying prevention expert and author of the best-selling book, The Parent's Guide to Texting, Facebook, and Social Media. Thank you for joining us, Sean. Thanks for having me, Barbara. And also joining our discussion is Cindy Gentry, the Coordinator of Prevention and Intervention Services for the Fremont Unified School District. Welcome, Cindy. It's nice to be here. Thank you, Barbara. You know, let's talk about the consequences of cyberbullying and how serious an issue it is. I think, Sean, you have a story to tell about a girl from Missouri? Yeah, actually, um, that's probably Megan Meyer. Um, she was a 13-year-old girl who friended a 14-year-old boy on a social network. It turned out that this boy was actually a 47-year-old woman oh. and a neighbor of Megan's oh. who threatened and harassed and belittled Megan to the point that Megan took her own life. Oh, that's very tragic. You know, when you define cyberbullying, I thought it was between two minors, though, not between an adult and a minor. It is. Yeah, you're correct. So what that was, that was more of a, a harassment um, mm -hmm. using technology, and uh, this happened back in 2006. So back then, there weren't laws or anything that were there to protect Megan, um, that were there to help her mother prosecute mm -hmm. this woman who did um, really just push Megan to her, where she, you know, to, to the brink where she couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And Sydney, cyberbullying, is that a big issue at school now, too? Um, we know that it is for our youth. Um, we know about 50% of our kids are being cyberbullied. However, it's very underreported. I think the students are very fearful that their parents will take their electronic devices. As you heard that one student say, it's my life. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on it all the time. They, they have a very strong need to be connected in ways that other junior uh, generations did not. So <clears throat> they're so afraid if they tell their parents, their parents will just take the computer or the iPhone away. Well, I would do that, except they can't write their papers without the computer. <laughs> I think I'd just unplug the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to your point, too, is kids would rather have their car taken away than their connectivity to the internet um, or to a cell phone. So that's how, that's, how, that's how important it is for them to be connected. It, they'd take the car, take the keys. We're back when I grew up. If you took my, my car, I would just think that the world came to an end. Mm -hmm. We asked some high school students from the Tri-City area to define cyberbullying in their own words. Here are their responses. Cyberbullying is when a group of people or individuals, they, they bully you online on, through internet. It's not direct. If somebody messaged me on Facebook or eat, like, posted something on my wall, everybody can see it. So they just want the embarrassment on that person. That's why they do it. Uh, cyberbullying is when someone makes a comment towards you that knocks you down, that makes you feel bad about yourself. So it could be anything from I don't like your shoes to I don't like you. Cyberbullying is when um, something bad is done to other people to hurt their feelings um, by using um, internet, any sort of technology, you know. It's when you're putting someone down in a rude manner. It could be a comment, it could be a snare. It and it's very hurtful, especially when the person, you don't see the person up front. It's over 
it's over the internet and it's it's so much more hurtful because it, you f have there's no feeling behind it. it's just straight words and it could be words it could be like just anything you know so that's cyberbullying to me mm. you know Cindy what I heard from those students was that they felt helpless and that the attack was relatively unprovoked it wasn't anything mm -hmm. that they did to deserve it what, what did you hear absolutely um, I think that uh, the victim can be any child because the bully can be the bullies don't have to be the biggest kid, the strongest kid anymore. Um, it really comes from anywhere. What did you hear in this student, Sean? I heard that really it's um, like psychological warfare for these kids. Mm. It's over and over, it's repetitive, and it's just, it's attack, 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 attack. And, you know, and they're on the receiving end and it's painful. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. They don't have those safe havens anymore because mm -hmm. now the bully can get to you at your house, in your classroom, wherever you go, you're, you're vulnerable. Are there other forms of, of cyberbullying besides just putting some, pasting something on someone's wall, like was mentioned there? I think YouTube can be used in a very negative way. This way they can take um, video of something that's embarrassing or uh, probably even something that isn't all that embarrassing and edit it so that it creates a video about a person um, you know, they, they have camera phones that can go into locker rooms and take any, any type of video footage and then post mm. that onto to YouTube with running commentary. So, like, say you have, you slip or trip or fall mm -hmm. down, or I, I can remember when I was a student, like, my skirted, we wore skirts <laughs> back then, your skirt, you go up in your underwear might show. I mean, to have that on YouTube and have two million people watch it and laugh and comment Absolutely. about it, that must be very psychologically damaging. Especially for a teenager mm -hmm. when that's their world. They think everyone, everyone in the whole world is watching and that's the biggest problem with it. Same thing for photographs. Mm -hmm. um, also, cyberbullying occurs when um, someone hijacks your profile, they take your password and they, mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll pretend to be you and they'll log in and they'll start attacking other people online, their friends. And, they're, and, and calling them names and, and embarrassing them, and then that'll just turn everyone against that person. So it's not really, of course, them doing it, someone else doing it. Or they'll set up another profile and pretend to be them, and they're not. Mm -hmm. So there's just a, there's a, a, a gazillion ways in which it occurs, unfortunately. Oh. Um, every day it seems like there's something new. Okay, so one of the other um, problems is that they'll create a whole website, almost like slam books of old and just totally bad mouth and harass. Uh, it's like an I hate Susie website for these kids. And they can set it up in about 30 seconds. They're mm -hmm. just amazing. They're, you know, they're not technically challenged like a lot of us are. So that's one of the problems. Well, what would be one of the signs that, or signs that you would look for to see if your child is involved in some of these bad relationships? Well, I think it's like any other problem that you might suspect your child is having that you notice changes in behavior. Are they more withdrawn? Are they sleeping more? Are they changing their eating patterns, changing their friendship patterns? Um, anything that seems just a little bit off, if it's telling you in your gut that something's wrong, something probably is wrong. And what about the bullier? Is there any special behavior signs that you notice with them? Well, usually someone who is bullying using technology is also doing it face-to-face uh, -face as well. Um, oh especially on the, on the male side, not so mm -hmm. much the female, but the male, um, unless they're just verbally using it. But um, aggressive behaviors, um, they might be lighting things on fire, they might be hurting animals, um, they might be talking back to their parents, swearing, drinking, drugs. A lot of the things that, um, a lot of those behaviors that, you know, when you know a child's in trouble, it's, it's also uh, segues mm -hmm. into the bullying using, using technology as well. Who bullies more, girls or boys? Girls, by far, unfortunately, cyberbullying for sure. I agree with I agree with Cindy, uh, hundred uh, percent. Girls are, they're all about the drama. Uh, they cause drama and then um, gossip, and then that turns into you know worse things. And then someone gets singled out, and it's that was their intent to begin with was mm -hmm. to get everyone to gang up on um, someone who they've decided stole their boyfriend or maybe their boyfriend mm. likes this, their friend now and mm -hmm. jealousy issues and uh, they're not getting the attention they wanted to get anymore. Why is cyberbullying so much worse than just regular old schoolyard bullying that some people feel is just a rite of passage? I think it's a psychological impact. I, I think it's that 24-7 vulnerability 
Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult, and it's very anonymous. It's it you don't always know who this is coming from. Maybe it's a friend or an enemy or a frenemy, um, and unfortunately, I think a lot of times it is people that the the child knows. Well, yeah. the massiveness of the attack was one little mm -hmm. punch in the yeah. right place. You can hit what. 30, 100, 200 people? Oh yeah, usually kids have over 500 friends in their network, so um, mm -hmm. just, and they're almost on all the time. I mean, the average, going back to that segment, I do know the average kid spends over 40 hours a week connected using social media. So it is, like you said, it is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. What they're, wow. you know, it's, they're spending more time online than they're spending in school or with their family, um, talking, having mm -hmm. conversations. So now it's replaced by text messaging and um, video gaming and social networking, and yeah. Well, let's talk about jargon that's used in cyberbullying. What about this sexting? So sexting is when an inappropriate photograph is sent using um, text technology, which is MMS, mm. but they're using MMS technology, so they're sending a video or a photograph, and it also can be a message as well. It's unfortunately what happens is kids really feel that texting is private, that they're sending it to one person and only to that one person, mm -hmm. but they still fail to realize that it's so simple for a text to be forwarded on to everyone in their mm -hmm. network, and that goes the same for a photo or a video. So you can send me something, and I can change a word or two that you said in that, in that text message, or I can leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. It has a photo, maybe a message to it, and I can forward out to everybody. I can post it up to Facebook. And everyone can see it there. I can post it up on YouTube, which is you know a public uh, social network, mm -hmm. and you know you're talking about millions of people. And that's when things go viral, and that is a form of cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Wow! And then some other terms I've heard: what dogpiling? What what is that? Um, when you have this sort of situation where one person might say something um, harassing another person, that's kind of one thing. But what often happens is this kind of crowd mentality where everyone will kind of join in and throw even more insults and slurs and whatnot on top of it. And just, you know, this poor individual is just kind of dogpiled, virtually dogpiled, I guess you would say, with other people chiming in. Mm. Kind of like the yeah. lemmings, you know, running to the sea and just mm -hmm. following each other right over the cliff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happened to Megan Meyer. That's exactly what happened to her. Wow. Well, after the break, we'll talk with some local high school students who produced a public service announcement on cyberbullying. I don't like drama, so I try to stay away from drama as much as I can, but it's high school and there's drama everywhere, so I would definitely ignore it and walk away. I just blog what I like and if someone doesn't like what I blog and they tell me that I don't like your blog, especially when there's a button that they can push for anonymous, um, I, I don't look past it. You know, it's like if they don't like me for who I am, so be it. I just try to avoid people who are bullying me. So just don't respond to them. I think ignoring would be the best way to not be involved with cyberbullying. Bring it out. Tell the uh, tell authority. Tell someone you trust. You know, tell your parents. Tell a counselor at school. Let it be known that what's going on, so you don't have to face it alone. I, I try not to get into those situations. Like on Facebook, you know, you don't add people you don't know. You don't talk to people you don't know. But sometimes cyberbullying comes from your own friends. So that's one of the hard parts of it. Joining me are three local high school students, Chris Henry, Avila Hendricks, and Austin Blaylock. They have created an award-winning public service announcement about cyberbullying. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at your video.
start with Chris. Why did you decide on the topic of cyberbullying? I think we chose this topic because it was easiest, easiest for our kids our age to relate to the video because it's the most common nowadays for kids our age. And how did you come up with the concept of the, the, bit, the video and the storyline with it? We, we each kind of went on the social networking sites that we usually use, like YouTube or Facebook and stuff. We just kind of mm -hmm. looked at the stuff that had been posted on there and said like, okay, well, how would that affect someone? Or at the extreme, like, what would it be like for that? And then we just kind of tried to use the emotion that would take from that and really put it into the video to try to make it as real as possible, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like, like I said, everyone's kind of been cyberbullied before, or everyone's had mean things said about them on the internet nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of easy to just take from that and say, well, this is how I felt about it, so this scene should feel like this. And that's really what we did with it. And then using the dramatic suicide, you thought that would be for drama and importance? or Cyberbullying usually always results in something negative, but it can get to the point where it can get that bad. So we were trying to show the worst possible situation so they, they get the effect that wow, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's really deep and that's something that should not happen to anybody. They shouldn't have those thoughts at all. Yeah. Then what about people's reaction to the video? A lot of people were touched by it. Mostly adults were really touched by it. They were affected by it. But mostly kids, they were like, oh, it's just a video. Like, younger kids don't really have, like, they didn't get really that much of an impact rather than adults. Why do you think it was that way? Cyberbullying is more common, so it's not, they're kind of just like used to it. They're like, okay, well, nothing can stop it, nothing can prevent it. But older adults, like, they don't experience that much of it as mm -hmm. younger kids. So there's kind of like, so when they hear about it, they're like, that's a big deal. It needs to stop as like, rather than younger kids, they've already experienced it, they're used to it. I was reading an article about it, and, and even some older people say, well, bullying's kind of the rite of passage through, you know, through school, that you have to get bullied to be strong. So. Do you ever hear that kind of attitude coming out? I think there's a difference between like being teased and saying, "Oh, like I'm just kidding," and making sure someone knows that they're and like their feelings not being hurt to what's being bullied on the internet, because the things that people will say on there is things that I can't imagine ever saying to someone in my life, and it's just it's saying that bullying is a rite of passage is just it's just stupid to me because it's not true. It shouldn't be true, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, poking fun at someone once in a while, like as long as their feelings aren't hurt, then it's not a problem. But as soon as the feelings start to be hurt, then it needs to stop because that's when it becomes not okay. Mm -hmm. And for people to just take it so lightly, it's just because people don't want to deal with the issue. So that's one reason, one difference between the online and the old-fashioned bullying. Any other differences between the online bullying and, you know, online cyberbullying and old-fashioned bullying? I feel like a lot more people do it now too because it is anonymous. Like, like older bullying, like yeah, there's some people that would do it and stuff, but I feel like it's a lot more easier and common now to do it over the internet since they're not doing it face to face. So a lot more people are joining in on it too. Well, well let's go back then to the video. You know, you made quite an impact in that video about using suicide as, as the end of being cyber bullied. Was that for effect or? For some other reason, any mainly for effect to um, to emphasize like the how bad it could really be, and you know really push the subject as like this can get this bad, and it probably will someday, you know, if you keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. If you were a parent, what would you do to protect someone for you know your child from being bullied? There's not much you can do except like try to tell your child not to listen to it. Probably just, if I had a kid, I'd probably tell them to tell me what went on at school. I'd probably try to make them feel better because telling the other kids I, to stop, they're not gonna stop, so. Do you tell your parents what everything that's going on in school? I tell them because it makes me look better. <laughs> because everyone else yeah. is so much worse. So I'm like, good thing you know, that's not me. But, I mean, I do tell my parents, and they're shocked, they really are. Yeah. I don't think my mom really Cyberbullying wasn't a problem when I was like younger, but I mean, I just choose not to do it because I think it's just rude. I think you just need to teach your kids manners, really, because anyone who's a normal, like, functioning person of society wouldn't spend the time tearing someone down like that on the internet. 
It's just, what, there's no point to it. And so I think just teaching your kids manners and respect is the only way that you can really prevent it. Because you have to let your, you have to give your kids the freedom to be on the internet and express themselves and socialize with people and you just have to teach them that they shouldn't be, do that in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is you're talking about a potential cyber, cyber bullier. Yeah. Tell him to use manners, you teach him that. What about how do you protect your child from being bullied or if a child is cyber bullied? You know, what if you find, if, what if one of your friends is, is getting mean messages or texts? Is, yeah. Any way you guys band together and take care of that and help them? Or? Well, violence is definitely not the answer. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> probably you would have to tell like, somebody with higher authority to do something about it because that's the only way they'll listen is somebody with higher authority, like the principal or like the vice principal at school. Yeah, or if it just gets bad enough, like I, me and two of my friends had a YouTube account that we would do like films and stuff on for a while and we just got so much negative feedback that we were just like, you know what, let's just delete it. Like, we'll just, we'll just stop. Like, and so we cut it off and we just didn't hear from it again. So, I mean, if it got bad enough to where we were like, we can't really do anything about it at this point, so we'll just stop, you know? Just delete it and cut off the problem, I guess. That way they have no way of really like reaching out to you. And then, I mean, if it continued, like if it was something through texting or something like that, then yeah, you'd have to tell someone, you'd have to go higher. You can't, you can't fight the person or anything because that's, mm -hmm. that just wouldn't do anything. What I see is I see three people who are not victims. I mean, each of you has made very positive comments about what would happen if someone did that to you. And I think what you see in, in the victims is, is they don't have these positive responses. You know, they almost feel helpless about it. Well, like I said, when we had that account, we probably spent three months just getting 10 comments a day about how bad it was and just saying terrible things about us even. So it was people that we had to have gone to school with, but we just said, you know what, let's just delete it. Like, mm -hmm. why bother wasting our time doing that anymore? Yeah, yeah. I'm not so, going to be a victim to this. And, and Chris, I hear you, you, you do social networking a little different way. Instead of deleting the account, you just avoid the account in the first place? Yeah, I actually have never had a Facebook or a MySpace. Um, a lot of it, uh, my parents have just talked me out of it a lot, saying, you know, you know, job interviews, look at it, and stuff like that. And I also see that my friends are always, like, obsessed with it. Like, mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of their time, and I have better things to do, so I just don't have one. Well, I really want to thank you three for coming in and sharing your video with us. It's been inspiring to see the younger generation and how you're taking charge of these problems. When we come back, the Parent and Teen Safety Kit and what you can do to prevent cyberbullying. It's your parents' responsibility, but most most of the times it's your own responsibility because you are the one who are, who's being bullied and you can avoid it if you want to. I think it's your own personal responsibility to just help yourself, you know. If you're not willing to help yourself, who's going to help you? It's really up to you and the way you handle it, the way I handle it. If, there were, if I was being bullied or anything, it's, it really depends on the way I handle it. Well, now that I'm 18, yeah, it is myself, but when I was younger and being online, it was really my parents trying to keep me away from the sites I shouldn't be on and things like that. We as a people need to come together to make a change in the world, so it's our responsibility in general to do something about it. So if I, I know about that friend and it would be really mean of me, it would be like I'm part of the person who's um, bullying them if I don't do something about it. So um, we as new generation and as students need to do something about it to make it stop. Welcome back, Cindy Gentry and Sean Edgington. We've heard from the high school students. Most of them thought it was their responsibility. It seems like a, a big thing to put on a high school student. What is the school's responsibility? Well, I think it's our responsibility to provide a safe, healthy environment for students to learn. And so while I'm proud of these um, young ladies and gentlemen for wanting to take responsibility, I, I think you're right. I think there's times when you need to go to an adult for help. And so at school, you know, at all of our junior highs and high schools, we have peer education programs. So there's students they can ask for help. There's counselors, teachers, administrators. 
We want to encourage kids because sometimes we want them to be good problem solvers, but we also want them to ask for help when they're in a little over their heads. You know, Sean, you had this problem that I think even prompted you to write your book, didn't you? Yeah, I did, actually. I was uh, personally involved with, um, my daughter was physically um, harassed, um, stalked, and threatened um, on Facebook and by text message. And it went on for over a month, and um, it was a really tough thing for, as a family, to live with. And um, mm -hmm. we really felt like our, our hands were tied. I mean, um, the girls that were um, the co-conspirators, -conspira mm -hmm. they were expelled from the high school that she went to. So um, at the end of the day, going to our high school and asking for protection for my daughter wasn't going to do anything. Also, she was a senior in high school. It's uh, very, um, you have to really tread waters very uh, lightly there as a parent. Um, she did not want us going and talking to parents and you know causing more trouble for her. And we had to respect her wishes. However, we had no idea how really bad it was for her. We had no idea that she was getting physically threatened. Otherwise, I would have gone to the police. And I would have done what I should have done. I should have gotten a restraining order against these girls. Um, they were hiding out at parking lots, at stores. They were finding out exactly where she was from other people that, you know, the, na the nature of social networking really, people can track you very easily. They know where you are. Your friends are all connected. Their photos are getting tagged and what have you. And so um, they, they knew where she was. And uh, it finally came to a head. They were, um, they were planning on um, destroying her in their words. And, um, and luckily some older boys stepped in and saved her. And um, so we were lucky there, really lucky. And I did feel like a, help, a helpless parent. And, um, and so that is the reason why I wrote the book. I didn't want parents to go through what I went through. No, you know, it, it seems this generation gap of, of what the kids know about social networking and IT and what we as parents know about it. Yeah, it's, it's not even really that. We, you don't really need to be cyber savvy to protect your kids. You really oh. don't. It's really pretty simple. It's all about talking to your kids often, explaining things that are happening in, you know, in the media every day. And it's really an open communication and letting them know that you're not going to take their technology away if they come to you for help. You won't cut letting, off their arm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Letting them know that you're going to be there for them and letting mm -hmm. them know that there are ways to, there are ways definitely that if I would have known what I know now, I would have definitely had my daughter for one call. We would have just gone, we would have called AT&T and we would have had them disable um, those numbers from being able to text her. There would not have been any texts had that happened. I would have had her block those girls sooner all on Facebook. So she wasn't seeing them. I would have had her take down her profile much sooner than when she decided to take it down. And you know what happens is, is a lot of times when there's social network feuds going on, if there's no one responding and defending themselves and, and um, you know, asking for help out there, then everything kind of stops and they mm -hmm. go and they find someone else to pick on. And to these kids' point, I mean, it, it is their responsibility, but really they can't do it on their own. And you know, they need a lot of help and they need a lot of support. My daughter was 16 and she needed help and she needed support. And again, she learned a lot too. So she's 18 now and she's, mm -hmm. she feels like she can really deal with it now. But at 16, 15, 14, 13, when these things are happening, it's very hard. Wow. Well, one of the high schoolers in the second segment said, internet protocol kind of talks about manners and that manners aren't used. In your book, you talk about having a contract with your, with your student. Are there certain things that do schools have contracts too with their students? Yeah, we have a um, use policy that the students and parents are supposed to sign mm -hmm. to say that they are using any technology at school appropriately, not to harass others, but to um, do educational research projects and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So we do, we do have that in place. Yeah, and so mine really, she's got the student, um, you know, student school contract and what mine's for is for the parents. And it takes that scary part of having to know what the technology and all the lingo is out. It takes all that out for a parent because I've got 20 talking points for the parents really to walk through of what's okay and what's not okay, what's mm -hmm. expected and what isn't, and then also consequences, what will happen if you break the rules. And kids sign, parents sign, and yeah. the reality is, is they do not want their phone taken away, and that is how they connect. It's all on their cell phone. They access Facebook now on their cell phone. They check in on their cell phone. They text on their cell phone. They listen to music. They take videos. They take pictures. Everything mm -hmm. is on cell phone now. Yeah, and I think you, you brought up a point about the, the contract issue is once 
you both understand the contract points and you both sign off on these are the rules, this is what you have to abide by, then you have to stick with the punishments too. Yes, right? you do. Absolutely. I mean, I, I see that a lot in, in my practice. I'll see not just teenagers, but parents lose the battle way earlier than that. They lose it in the, the two-year-old that, that they don't want to say no for the 10th mm -hmm. time, so they let the child get away with it. And that just reinforces his behavior for next time. Now he knows he only has to do it 21 times and then he'll get away with it. Absolutely. And, right. the, and the stakes are so high. Mm -hmm. When they're little, the stakes are a little smaller. But if you don't start there when the stakes are high, as they are in the case of cyberbullying, we've had many, many children and young people commit suicide over these types of things. You know, you get in the practice of it when they're small so that when the stakes are high, you're there, you're ready to be consistent and, and enforce what you say goes. Yeah, and the biggest, one of the biggest problems that I see is that parents don't think it can happen to their child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they think, not my child, not in the city of Fremont, not, you know, not in my neighborhood, not in my school, but it's not a reality. Unfortunately, it happens to all kids. My daughter was a straight-A student, leadership kid, cheerleader, mm -hmm. 100 best friends, and it happened to her because she was accused of doing something that she did not do. And, you know, it's, it can happen to the best of kids, and it can happen to the worst of kids. And then, on the other hand, there's kids that are bullies that, you know, parents, I get emails all the time from parents who have their child has been a victim of a bully using technology and the parents do nothing about it. They get caught and the parents do nothing about the fact that their, their, their daughter or their son completely annihilated someone else using technology. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem on both sides. Let's ask these high school students. Let's hear from them. And we've asked them if they've ever been cyber bullied. I can say I've personally been cyberbullied, and it's been through friends, like fighting with friends or not even friends, and I've seen my friends being cyberbullied, so and it's, it's, not, it's not fun because people cry over it. It's, it's a serious issue, and it's just not something I don't think anyone should be put through. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, a lot of people don't like me for who I am sometimes. Um, but people that I don't know, like, let's say from my blog, they like me for who I am, so they follow me. My sister was cyberbullied when she came here two years ago. Some, some people bullied her on internet, on Facebook, because she was brown and she had long hair. And people were bullying her just because she had long hair. To start off, my dad is transgendered male to female, and earlier this year someone tried to friend me on Facebook, said they were from Irvington, so I took a chance with it. They could be someone new in my classes, I didn't know. But then they just started talking a whole bunch of things about my dad, saying, oh, cross Jester's daughter, how's your dad, da 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 da. Just, it was, it was horrible. And it wasn't only me being cyberbullied by this person, but about four other peoples from Irvington got bullied by this person. The last student took a chance and friended someone she didn't know. How do we protect a child with an open heart? We want our children to have open hearts, but they need to be a little cynical and a little suspicious of people that they don't know. I mean, I think one of the biggest things that we've talked about is that they shouldn't be friending people that they don't actually know in real life. Um, people can pretend to be anyone and anything online, and you never know if that is another child, another student, or if it is a 47-year-old adult that means harm. Yeah, unfortunately, social networks are the home of predators, and they're looking for kids that are vulnerable that will take their friend request, um, even though they don't know them. And as parents, we're not doing a good job as talking to our kids about not friending strangers, about what can happen when that happens, about kids that disappear because they've accepted a friend request from a stranger. And we, it's up to us to scare the living daylights out of our kids because 71% of our kids get friend requests and contacted from strangers online. Wow. So it's a big percentage. How can a parent protect their child from this? Talk to them, you know, just make sure that they do not ever friend someone they don't know. And what they should do is they should go through their friends every now and then and make sure they're people that they know and the other thing is look at the number of friends their child has. If they have a thousand friends, that is a big red flag. They have, they've got strangers in their network because there's mm -hmm. most of us don't know a thousand people that we trust. The parents just have to be really closely involved. I, I feel that monitoring on a daily basis and text conversations is really, 
it's, it's not really right, unless maybe there's a reason, you have a reason. Um, I would check photographs, spot check photographs that are on a cell phone and videos that have been taken just to mm -hmm. make sure that um, nothing gets up, posted up online that shouldn't mm -hmm. be. Um, the worst thing that can happen is if they receive an inappropriate photograph and then they post it or send it out, they can be um, registered, they have, might have to register as a sex offender mm -hmm. and you know, that's, that's um, cyberbullying as well. So it's just really, it's just a very fine line. There's software programs that you can buy that can monitor keywords that are, you know, serious concern and they will only send you messages if these keywords are used or phrases. So you can do that. Um, it's just really all about you as a parent, what you feel the, is right for you. So in a perfect world, well, how do you think we should get rid of cyberbullying? Well, I think one of the things that I'm finding is that our students do not demonstrate high levels of empathy. Um, on our California Healthy Kids survey, only about 44% of students reported high levels of empathy. And I think that inability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and to know how that feels, how it would feel for you if you were cyberbullied, um, I, th mm. I think that's a big part of it. And I think some of the kids, when they were talking about personal responsibility, they were kind of talking about avoiding that bullying, to not be part of the problem, to be part of the solution, and to treat mm -hmm. others. Um, you know, where have manners gone out there? Why is it okay to say things about someone that you don't even know, that you wouldn't even say that to their face, and yet it's okay to post something hateful and hurtful online like that? So it's, I, yeah, it seems like the kids don't have a way of expressing their emotions except in, you know, like posting it to the wall so 8,000 other people can see it. Whereas there should be another way for someone to vent how angry or upset they mm -hmm. are. Less publicly. Yeah, yeah, less publicly, right. Well, I th and I think to your point, um, I think kids that stand by and watch someone being bullied, like she said, mm -hmm. you know, that's that also is really cyberbullying. When you're sitting, standing by, and you're watching, because usually when you're on a social network, you are, you, you are witnessing someone else being taken down. You are witnessing that harassment and all of that. And it's, and if more of them can actually stand mm -hmm. up and really feel that empathy and, instead you know. Instead of dogpiling. Right, exactly. instead of dogpiling. And, you know, we actually are starting a movement next year. It's the Great American No Bull Challenge. It's national and we're, and I feel it needs to be at a grassroots base, a grassroots where students are actually making the change. Because as parents, we can preach, I can write books, and, you know, I can do all that. But really, it's mm -hmm. the kids that we need to really ingrain in their, in their daily lives that bullying is not okay. It's really painful. And almost every adult has a story, a story when we were bullied when we were young. And, and it's a scar, and it's really something that, you know, when you add technology to it, the emotional scar is just that much deeper. And um, so this Noble Challenge, kids will be creating documentary um, about, create, about how bullying is not okay, and uploading it and being judged and winning scholarships and trips and prizes. So we're really excited about that. We, we hope that'll yeah. start the change. That, you know, what's interesting is we've come almost full circle. We've come from recognizing bullying and how bad it is and, and how we need to change behavior to finding out how bullying, cyberbullying is anonymous, it's even more hurtful, it gets to more people and other people chime in and now we're back to, well, let's teach our children empathy. Let's teach them what happens when someone's words hurt them. Mm -hmm. And let's not allow that to happen to our friends. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're saying too. Stand up if you see someone doing something mm -hmm. wrong. That's our motto. It's stand up and band together and, you know, create a movement. You know, no more bullying. Make it so that it's not cool. Mm -hmm. Remember when smoking used to be um, okay in the 60s and then we all got educated with D.A.R.E. as to how smoking and drinking wasn't cool anymore and we bugged our parents. Oh, my God, why are you smoking? And pretty soon they had to quit because we just bugged them so much, you know. Yeah, and you that's, know, that's right. We, we were very successful in that and getting yeah. our, kid, our parents to quit. We make smoking um, socially incorrect that's instead right. of the cool thing to do. Yeah. And it would be wonderful if we could do the same with bullying. Thank you both for helping us get to the heart of this serious problem. It's growing among teens and preteens, and cyberbullying is not likely to go away anytime soon. It's a serious problem with serious consequences. But we have tools to help parents protect their children against cyberbullying. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Voices in Health. For more information on cyberbullying and teens, visit these websites.